So the first question is, I read a problem page on a mom page and I took one of the problems and jammed it into my past memory. Now I'm convinced it happened to me. I have one problem after another that I analyze even when I try not to. Uh, I'm not diagnosed as OCD, but I'm sure it is. I've done this as long as I remember. I used to have hand wash and check dates on food, worry about contamination. My doctor put me on beta blockers to help me with physical effects, but it set my head into overdrive. I worry that I can't deal with this. I'm in a battle with my thoughts and getting tired. Well, listen, the big thing here is you're spending time analyzing. The more you spend your time analyzing and going from thought to thought, like having the mentality of, if I can just solve this one thought, I will get over OCD. That is all I need to do is I need to just figure out this one thing. It doesn't work like that because your mind, it's not attached to the thought, it's attached to the anxiety. So you will maybe solve the thought depending on the thought. Sometimes it's easier to solve, sometimes it's harder. But say you solve the thought to 100% um, satisfaction that the OCD wants you to get, right? Um, it, your mind is going to move on to a new thought and you're going to be going from thought to thought to thought endlessly. The thing is with OCD is it doesn't go away until you stop paying attention to the thoughts. If you look deeper into the thoughts that you're having, no matter what it is, it's still um, the same kind of root fear or maybe there's two or three root fears that it cycles between but it, there's only a few and your mind will come up with different situations different details that all lead to that one root fear so the more um you feed that so the more you tell your mind that this this is actually dangerous this is actually important to me the more you do this the more your mind is going to send you these thoughts and you know all this stuff like you know Again, you know, I don't want to get into the medication. For some people, it works, but for most people, it doesn't. And you know, it's you can't rely on that in order to help you recover. Either way, even if it works for you, you still can't rely on it as your sole way of recovery. Because if the medication stops, and for some people, um, later on in life, the doctors suggest that they get off of it because um, it causes health issues, or it can interact with other medications as well. It's actually a pretty common thing. So you can't rely on that as your recovery. You will, and the thing is, it's as soon as you get off of the medications, if you're analyzing and you're, you're not reducing that underlying sense of panic, that numbness that the medication causes will go away, you know, and you already have an adverse side effect. So it's, it's, you need to do the work, you know, and it's, you don't need proof. This is the big thing here is because when you have OCD, you are like, well, okay, if I don't pay attention to the thought, how do I know that it's OCD or how do I know that I'm not really in any danger or and it's not um, real or whatever, right? However you describe it. And the thing is, is when you, you have to say, I choose to view this as OCD. I choose to believe that it's not dangerous. Because when you're saying I choose, it doesn't require proof. You know, you're saying I'm making a, a choice. You know, I'm not saying, oh, well, you know, I'm making a, a, I'm figuring it out, getting reassured and then making a choice. No, I'm just, I'm just choosing this. Everybody can choose what they want. I'm choosing to believe this is OCD. And once you choose this and you have this position, because you're when you're saying it like that, you're coming from a position of power. You're in power. You're in control. You're making the choice from a power seat, right? Rather than trying to solve thought after thought after thought from a weak position, you know? And the OCD has the strong position. So, you know, if you're, if you're um, coming to it from a very kind of a powerful point, your, your mind says, okay, well, you know, if you're in control and it stops sending you the thoughts, not instantly, it will take a while, um, but the analyzing, I'm just like, my basically to cut it short, uh, I'm saying until you stop analyzing and you overpower your mind into saying, okay, you know what? I've had enough. I'm sick of it. I'm not doing it anymore. Until you get to that point where you do this, you will not recover. You know, so it's either you're going to do it today 
or you're going to do it in a month or you're going to do it in a year and that means your suffering ends today and the recovery starts it doesn't mean like your suffering fully ends but there's a change that's going to be happening you know you're turning a corner here and you're starting to recover or you're going to start recovering a month when you decide that you're sick of it or you decide in a year that you're sick of it and your recovery will start in a year it's up to you where you start to do this but you will have to do this in order to recover and it's kind of it's hard work and um it's just it needs to be done you know there's no really way around it nothing around it works you know trust me you know we i've talked to many many people about ocd recovery all my clients right it's you know people have tried various things it doesn't work i've tried myself pretty much everything under the sun the medication the vitamins the meditation the, 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 you know all of those things work to an extent like you know i, I do say you know the meditation the coffee all that helps but it helps it doesn't cure the condition you know this cures the condition and if you do other things you know it, it just makes it easier to go through the recovery process but this is the central part is disregarding the thoughts because just like we talk about reassurance right the reassurance from other people versus the reassurance from self well when I talk to my clients, the reassurance from other people that you can get rid of pretty quickly um, or physical reassurance, like checking online, things like that, like that, it's fairly easy to get rid of because it's a physical action. You have to get on the computer and go online or you have to go and ask somebody or call somebody or whatever. It's physical. Um, but mentally, just to try to relive the moment or um, try to figure something out. It, it takes milliseconds, you know, so it's hard to stop. But the more you practice stopping it, even if you're not always successful, you you won't be always successful. That's just the reality of it. But even if most of the time you are um, trying to do it the correct way, you're still sending a message to your mind that you are no longer uh, wanting uh, to solve these things. You are now getting into the power seat. So it's just, it's very important to at least start the process, you know, and as you do the process, don't get discouraged when you have those bad days, you know, it will get easier. And it, it's it's kind of like, you know, like working out or any anything else that's a repetitive thing, it just gets better over time, you know, but it's just practicing it over and over and over again, you know, every time you get a thought, it's a, an opportunity for you to practice. You know, but if you're taking it every time you get a thought, you're choosing to analyze, you're not even staying the same. You're actually getting worse because every time you're showing your mind that I'm in danger, I need to solve this, this is very important. And of course, you're going to feel worse. And of course, you're going to be tired because you're living your real life and at the same time living an OCD life where you're trying to solve situations that do not exist. You know, so it's just making a choice that saying, you know, it's what I've been doing is not working. It's, it hasn't, you know, it, it, there, there needs to be a, a change, you know? So it's, it's kind of like a long answer, but I hope it makes a difference for you. So the next question is, uh, why do you give up, make helpful videos on the Russian channel? Oh yeah, guys, if, uh, if any of you speak Russian, um, I have a second channel uh, that's a Russian channel. I didn't give up. <laughs> Uh, I'm just behind, to be honest with you. So between clients and doing the channel and everything else, it's... It's, it's just, it's hard to keep up, but I am definitely going to continue to do the videos and uh, hopefully actually I'm going to do a Russian version of this after um, I'm done the, today's show. So look out for it in the, in the next day or so. And this is the other thing, okay? Um, it, it's kind of just a, um, almost like an anecdote of uh, the, the actual situation of uh, OCD that... When I was doing this channel, and uh, as many of you know, uh, I speak Russian, and I, you know, it's anywhere, any country um, besides like U.S., uh, U.K. is all right, Australia, Canada, you know, but any other country, it's very hard to find a specialist, you know. And Russia is, it, it's, it's like a taboo there, you know. No, you're not, you can't be having mental issues, you know. And I find it, it's so bad to an extent where um, 
to describe situations in about like OCD such as you can say anxiety but to say you know don't seek reassurance or all of these things uh, when I'm doing the video and I'm trying to come up with words to describe it there is no words to describe it you know and when I'm talking to people about it people don't know how to describe what they're feeling because there's no words to describe it because it's it's so taboo nobody has talked about it you know because I thought it was just me I'm like maybe I don't speak Russian well anymore because I'm not there anymore for you know like I've, I've moved to Canada when I was little right so like maybe I just don't speak no there's actually no words to really describe it correctly there's no terms you know so that's how bad and that's how dark the situation is around the world when it comes to um, um, getting help for OCD, you know. So it, it like there are a few specialists, don't get me wrong, there's a few specialists, but they're just, for every specialist, I swear, there's like 50 people that are pretending to be specialists or pretending to know what they're talking about. And then you go to these people and then they just either waste your time or make the situation even worse. You know, so it is up to every individual to, you can do it. You know what I mean? Like I did it. You can do it. You can get better from this. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't or whatever, you know, you can, but you have to do the work. So the next question, it's kind of a long, so the person is asking, can you have only one uh, false memory thought? And can you have it for a long period of time, such as the person says five months? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it can be, it, with false memory, it can be anything, you know, it can be um, a thought that switches from one to one type of false memory to another, um, even different themes within the false memory, or it can stay on one thought, one situation, and you're worrying about it for months and months or years and years, you know, I've seen all kinds of variations of false memory, um, sometimes a person gets false memory years and years down the line sometimes the person gets false memory seconds after what they think happened you know it's it's common either way um i don't really think it matters much to your mind um in terms of when you're getting the false memory like what the situation is or when you're getting the false memory because it is all about the doubt if you're doubting anything from the past it has to do with false memory right if you're doubting something from the future, then it has, it you know, it's like a future fear OCD, right? As we would call it. So it's, I mean, I wouldn't try to analyze um, why this thought is different from other thoughts because then you're starting to ask for reassurance and then you're getting into the situation of, um, is this OCD or not? Let me try to figure it out. Let me spend all my time figuring it out. While you're figuring it out, your mind sees your anxious um, state sees that you are not in control and sends you more thoughts you get more scared and it just that you know um, the ball just keeps rolling more and more so the next question is hi Ali I want to know how come my harm OCD thoughts feel real like if I had the urge to do it, which I don't want to I want my life back okay guys listen harm OCD always feels real Many, many times you can feel like you're having an urge to do something. It's This is part of harm OCD. It's kind of like the same thing as asking, well, when I'm sick and I have a runny nose, why do I have a runny nose? Because you're sick, you have a cold, <laughs> you know? You have urges, you feel like it's real because you have OCD and you have harm OCD, you know? S think about it this way. If it didn't feel real, if you didn't get that feeling of an urge, you know, if it didn't, it basically, if it didn't feel real, would you worry about it? No. If you would not worry about it, would you have OCD? No. So in order to have OCD, it has to feel real. And when you get over OCD, all of it stops. You know, the question I get asked a lot is, when you get over OCD, do you never have the thoughts or do you have the thoughts and you disregard them? That's a question I get asked actually a lot a lot <laughs> all the time pretty much I get emails like that because people don't really understand well how does it feel um, not to have the thoughts and it, it you don't get the thoughts anymore it they don't come into your mind because that connection between fear and this particular thought that physical connection that your brain creates that neural pathway or whatever they're called right um, it's lost 
the connection is broken so whenever you're faced with something that will trigger you say for example you're afraid of um i don't know running somebody over while driving right so every time you drive you tense up you think that you're hitting somebody or that you have hit somebody in the past or whatever right um but once you start to do the work and you you finish the program the process right of recovery um it the connection between the fear and that situation is gone so you will be driving but you will not have those thoughts so the next question is i've noticed that for me it's really hard not to give into compulsions when i'm in the middle of a setback in my recovery in the past when i've had a setback in my anxiety symptoms i would do checking until the setback went away this time i'm trying to just accept the setback and the return of many of the anxiety symptoms and it's really hard Okay, this is a very important topic to talk about. Um, yeah, when you're in the middle of a setback, it is so much more difficult because if usually, say, you have anxiety that's like 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, um, that you're dealing with, like OCD, right? Um, it's easier than if your anxiety is to 10, 11 out of 10, right? Um, it's, it's harder to refuse, and that's why... First of all, it's best not to get yourself in that situation. So that's another reason why you should not be checking and analyzing. Because once you get into it, it's really hard to pull yourself out of it. What I would suggest in that situation is um, as much as possible to delay the uh, compulsion. So, okay, say to your mind, yes, I will do it. Or yes, I will check. I will try to figure it out. But I will do it in a few hours. Uh, then when you actually get to those few hours, say, see if you can delay it again. Okay, I'm gonna, I can, I've held on for two hours, I can do another hour, you know, and keep going like this, because every um, checkpoint, you will feel like your anxiety is a little bit lower, you know, and as you go through it, you will feel better and better, and then the, the symptoms will go away, because what you're doing is you're actively denying them, even though it doesn't feel like denying, because you are um, more, like, delaying it, but to your mind, you are refusing to do the compulsion, which is good. So that's how um, I would uh, operate when you're at that level of anxiety, because it's hard. When you're at 10 out of 10, it's hard to say, well, I just accept them when I just refuse. You know, when you're at 7 or 6 out of 10, that's a lot easier, but at 10 out of 10 is hard. So I would start with at least delaying if you, and that goes for anybody who's dealing with OCD, any type of OCD, right? That if you can't refuse, then at least delay because it has a really good effect as well. It's not quite the same, but it's almost the same and it's a step onto the recovery path. So next question is, hi Ali, I was diagnosed with relationship OCD in March, but I still doubt I have it. My thoughts have begun to come to become confusing and I am also afraid that this is how I actually feel and that I will hurt my boyfriend. Uh, I love him, but the doubt is getting strong. I have really been trying to heal, but the numbness scares me. Is this OCD or these are my true deep feelings? I have begun to have anxiety attacks as well. How can I handle this? It's, it, you're analyzing. You know, you're analyzing and trying to figure it out how you feel, what you feel. And OCD is all about the feelings. So your feelings have become very clouded because you have OCD. Yeah, this is definitely a relationship OCD. This is actually a very common type of OCD. So it's just the reaction. The more you react like this is real, the more you will feel like it's real. So it's changing your reaction because... So far, you have been reacting by analyzing, trying to figure it out, and you've been getting worse. So let's try to do the opposite of that, and you will see that you will start to feel better. And the numbness and all of those feelings will go away as you're doing it, because your brain is trying to mimic a real situation, right? So if in a real situation you would feel numb, the brain is trying to mimic that. Or just like a person who uh, thinks that they killed somebody, they imagine it as if it was real, you know. Or, uh, I don't know, a person who thinks uh, they're getting sick from contamination, they can actually have those feelings as well, you know. it's I mean, it's all part of the same thing. It's basically not believing what your mind tells you and just moving forward from a position of power. And the more you do this, the more all of these things around it, all the feelings, all of the kind of side effects of the thought will go away on their own because the mind will just stop sending them to you.
this is not you creating this. This is very important. This is not you creating this. Your mind is coming up with this and kind of forcing it on you, you know, and you're buying into it. So you choose not to buy into it and your mind will choose not to force it on you anymore because you're not buying into it anymore. So next question is always feeling like you do or say the wrong thing part of OCD or just an oversensitive personality? Um, it's hard to classify just based on the question. Uh, I would say that um, if it's repetitive and if you're obviously you're listening to this channel and it seems to resonate with you, then it sounds like it's an OCD thing. But people with OCD by default have a very sensitive personality so it kind of is both but in if, it, if it's happening repetitive and if you feel like you have to analyze or do compulsions then it is OCD next question is Ali I have relationship OCD see there here is another person with a relationship OCD I have begun the healing process thoughts are minimizing good you do the right things you do the uh, you refuse paying attention you refuse analyzing and the thoughts start to minimize but I'm getting severe chest pain and I'm losing hair from stress and anxiety so although the thoughts are not bothering me as much the physical symptoms are still very real how do I handle this Okay, in terms of uh, hair loss, hair loss actually happens a lot later after the, not a lot later, but quite a bit later um, after the stress uh, has occurred, okay? So um, it can happen uh, like a month after the, the actual stressful situation happens. It's just kind of like how hair follicles work, I don't know. But I've heard about that before. Um, so... It, it, all of this basically it's going to go away the severe chest pain it's because you are uh really trying to do the work and it's a hard work you know so um it's all of this will go away on its own you just need to power through um there's i don't think there's much you can do about the physical symptoms actually you know what no that's, that's wrong i think there's a few things you can do because you can do not not in terms of hair the hair will fall out like some hair will not all of it don't worry some hair will fall out it will, it will grow back okay because there's not actual um physical problem it's just stress um so the hair don't worry about it in terms of feeling shortness of breath uh chest pain all of these kinds of symptoms you need to relax your mind as much as possible so this is what i was talking in the beginning of the show where you know all of these things such as like meditation not having a lot of coffee uh not getting overstressed all of those things help your recovery process because they help minimize symptoms such as these okay so really trying to relax your mind as much as possible if somebody says something silly to you don't start an argument with them just let them be you know if somebody is pushing too much work on you say okay i'm gonna handle this this and this but i'm not gonna do above and beyond right now because i'm trying to recover you know that doesn't mean to do nothing because doing nothing is also bad uh when you don't have a lot going on in your life that can cause uh, OCD to get worse because it gives your mind more room to focus on OCD but you want to be just having enough in your life but not overworked not overtired because you're going to be overtired from dealing with OCD already so if you're adding an extra workload on top of it that's not a good idea you can do it after you recover but it's actually never a good idea but after you recover you can do it if you want to but right now you need to kind of just slow down take it easy, you know, um, yoga really does good, uh, yoga meditation, um, you know, common sense advice, right, like eating right, you know, sleeping, sleeping seems to be very important in OCD, so I, I see major difference for people when they're sleeping good versus not sleeping so good, so, but generally, even if you do none of these things, as you recover from OCD, those things will go away on their own, but you can help yourself by, by doing these additional things. So the next question is, um, hi Ali, thank you for your videos and support. Oh, you're very welcome. I have been having OCD for eight years now. In the past two years, I found out that I'm having OCD. My theme is religious and harm. Yeah, two probably most common themes. Even though I have reduced extent of reassurance I used to do, I always have fear that I should reassure 
to God and apologize for my thoughts, but when I do, it just becomes a... B yeah, well, the reason why you feel like you have to reassure and apologize, that's a compulsion. So what you want to say is, I deal a lot with religious OCD and all kinds of different religions. Um, so um, basically, it all comes down to doing something against God and... Um, depending on the religion also uh, what if I don't get into heaven and that kind of uh, thought process so what you want to do is you want to say God already knows what I'm feeling what I'm thinking I'm I don't have to do any compulsions I'm choosing not to do anything you know it is a little bit of a reassurance but it does work to stop you from doing the compulsions and then you once you get into the rhythm of stopping the compulsions you won't need to say it um, also try not to say it over and over again but just saying it once okay god already knows i don't have to deal with this you know and then because what you're saying is i'm choosing not to do this because i don't have to basically in the, to put it in other words and that really works to help the with the recovery so the next question is again about the relationship OCD. The person asks, why is it that every time I have a disagreement with my husband or an argument, my head apparently wants to leave him, but once it has passed, I'm okay, uh, but my head still keeps replaying to leave him. Is this OCD or is this me? I am so confused. This is OCD. And again, you guys can see like uh, relationship OCD is a very, very common type of OCD. You know, and you arguing with your husband is exposure and it's a, it basically triggers OCD because well, if you're not arguing, those thoughts are still coming into your mind. But when when you're in the process of arguing, it triggers it. You know, it creates a situation where um, basically it brings up those thoughts again, you know, and because you react once the argument is over and the situation is solved. The reaction doesn't stop because the reaction is OCD and then you're just replaying it. So it's kind of like you're getting reassurance. How do I feel? Do I feel like this? Do I feel like that? And you're going over and over and over in your mind, you know? So it's stopping that pattern. This has nothing to, I don't want to give you reassurance, but honestly, you know, it's the more you pay attention to it, the more real it will feel, but it has nothing to do with you. These thoughts are being forced upon you stop buying into them the more you stop buying into them and say no i choose to believe it it's ocd i choose to believe this doesn't doesn't matter and i'm moving on and doing this over and over and over and over again you know and the, the other thing is if you're having this type of ocd when you're having doubts don't ever tell your significant other that you're having doubts on this topic because if you start telling them that you've had those thoughts, you you will get over OCD and you will um, be able to move on. You know, like th those thoughts will stop coming into your mind. But for them, they will always remember that you felt this way or you said that, you know? So because they don't have OCD, they don't understand how OCD works. So... Keep it to yourself, just work on your recovery and don't tell them that you're having these kinds of thoughts because people who don't have OCD don't understand that it is only OCD, that it's not real and they will start to associate it with them. So really, honestly, whenever you have OCD, it's never a good idea to tell anybody your thoughts because it, it's never productive. So this is the show for today. If you have any questions, you can always uh, check out youhaveocd.com. There's a private recovery program there uh, available with me, which is one-on-one -on -one talking to me. Um, and there's different packages depending on your needs. There's severe package, which is multiple times a week or once a week or just a single session. So you can check that out. There's also eBooks. There's articles. There's lots of information here and on uh, youhaveocd.com to help you recover. So please check that out. Um, I guys, just so you know, uh, I can't answer every email when people are asking me advice through the email. So I can only do advice right now through the show or through the recovery program, because I simply have no, not, you know, like when I look at my email list, it's pages and pages. So I can't, I can't do it all. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and I'll see you next week.